So my name is uh, Geraint Lewis, and I'm a professor of astrophysics at the University of Sydney, and I am the author with Luke Barnes of A Cosmic Revolutionary's Handbook, or How to Overthrow the Big Bang. This book is for anyone who is interested in understanding how astronomers have come up with this picture of the Big Bang, this sort of universe that was born in a an amazing event 14 billion years and evolved into the sea of stars and galaxies we see around us today. Who should read it? Well, I personally think everybody should read it. We hope that readers will take away from the book this idea that uh, our picture of the Big Bang, the fact that we've got this evolving universe, is the result of an awful lot of detective work and us observing the universe over many centuries. It's a consistent, it's a coherent picture, and it's been built out of lots of bits of physical pieces being brought together. So the Big Bang is not some sort of idea that somebody dreamt up one day, but it's the result of an awful lot of work and interpretation of the universe. So myself and my co-author Luke Barnes, we give an awful lot of public talks. We talk about the universe, we talk about astronomy, we talk about cosmology. And at the end of every, every talk that we give, um, people ask questions and there's always somebody in the audience that says, I have a different idea of how the universe behaves. And to explain to them uh, this entire story we have of, of why we have the Big Bang picture is too much to put into a question and answer session at the end of a talk, so we put it into a book instead. This book was born in just chats with my, my good colleague Luke Barnes and with other cosmologists that we know. Uh, of course, being in the field, we know the story. We know how the idea of the Big Bang grew over time, how the observations of the universe changed the way that we understood the universe behaved. But there wasn't really a source that we could point to um, that gave the, you know, the dirty linen just what needs to be done to build up a theory of the universe. So we decided that um, we, we, we would write the book to tell that story. It's an important book because the phrase, the Big Bang, it, get, it gets bandied around a lot. And of course, it's a title of a, a well-known sitcom, etc. But the Big Bang theory, the idea of the expanding universe, is more than just a sound bite. Right? It's a result of an awful lot of scientific investigation. And for myself as a scientist, that I think that is a very interesting story. And I think for the outsider, I think knowing that uh, the Big Bang is said, just not a catchy title for a sitcom, it is a, uh, a body of work built over more than a century um, with lots of, lots of actors that took part and provided bits and pieces, I think is a very important story to understand how science itself works. The most interesting experience was going back and relearning the stuff that I thought I knew. There's always, you know, you, when, you, when you do your science degree, you come out, you finish your degree, and you think, yes, I know everything. And then a few years go by and you realize, maybe I don't. And you go back and you look, at, uh, you look in depth at the topic, and there's still things that surprise me today, but you also look back at the history. And the history which you thought was a nice, simple progression, and often, you know, there are particular individuals who are portrayed. It's a messier thing, lots of people involved, lots of uh, t sort of different kinds of investigation. So um, it taught me, of course, that science is messy. It's not a simple one-way street. My favorite scientific revolutionaries, ooh. I'm gonna tread very carefully here. As I mentioned, I've look, you look into the history of science and the history of science is much messier than you ever really expected. And often there's an idea that science is driven by these lone geniuses. And that's, that's not the case. Anytime there's a, a, somebody who is a giant, below that giant there are thousands of others working. Um, I, I, of course, the, the, the names Copernicus and Kepler and all those people, and, and especially Isaac Newton, that put us on this path to modern cosmology. We can't look beyond their contributions. More recently, um, I, uh, one of my scientific heroes is, is Fred Hoyle, the cosmologist from the 20th century. Lots of things he 
didn't get quite right, but the things that he did get right, he completely changed our understanding of the universe, how stars evolve and change and what goes on in their cores. He, he did some very beautiful work. Um, and I, 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 what I really like about him, of course, is that he was a risk taker, right? He was willing to push at the edge of science at the bits you get right, you get the fame for, and the bits you get wrong, you get derided, right? So, but at least he tried that and he pushed on those doors. So he is one of, well, still one of my heroes. I guess the most unexpected thing that I learned when I was preparing the material for this book is that there is an entire alternative culture of cosmology going on out there. There are people that discuss cosmology and discuss the universe who are not academics and they have their own ideas and they don't interact with the academic community and they often are the ones that get very angry with us talking about the Big Bang idea. I was surprised to see just how big that community is and I would hope that some of them read this book to understand why we say what we do about the universe.